Damian Bartonic on behalf of Fox West Texas and the official host of MMA Monday, the only MMA show in San Angelo. Today I'm joined by a very special guest. Look, it's 6 a.m., but guess what? When the champ is available, you make accommodations. Drikas Duplessis, the champion in the flesh. My brother, how is that champ life going? Oh man, so good, so good. Thank you for waking up early. You know, the time zone can be a little bit tricky sometimes. I know all about it. Man, it's been it's been great. You know, the um, it's been everything that I expected, everything that I hoped for, and better. And um, you know, training wise, you know, I felt once I got that belt, I I got a fire under me. And you know, a lot of people might think once you win that belt, you lose some of your hunger. Or I always said it: becoming UFC champion is definitely not my goal, not my end goal, not at all. There's a lot of things that need to happen. I'm young. And once I got that belt, and now that I have that belt, and I see, you know, everybody talking about, oh, Drake isn't that good. Well, the same old story. And, uh, you know, it fuels me even more because I've already proven them wrong. And whatever they say can't, can never take it away. And it will be in history forever. If I never fight again, I will always be a UFC champion. But now I said in one of my posts, uh, that was for history. That was the first um, African residing champion, the first South African to even be in the top of the of the sport and of course to bring that belt home now it's for the legacy and uh that's something that gets me up every day you know there's a new hunger there's a there's that championship hunger because now i'm defending my throne and i'll do anything to defend that throne so in training it's just you know the team everybody stepped it up because now they're going against the world champion everybody wants to land a shot on the world champion because if you can give the cha world champ a hard time you're not far off of, of you know, getting that, that big shot. And, uh, you know, my team's amazing. Coaches, everybody stepped it up because everybody realized we are now world champions and we should behave as such when it comes to training, recovering. And uh, it, we just stepped it up uh, just another level. And uh, it's been amazing. You know, it's human nature to kind of sit back and say, hey, man, I'm the champ. Maybe I can enjoy a few extra meals. I'm feeling good. But you seem even more locked in. Tell me why that is and how you were able to defeat the human nature aspect of kind of chilling and relaxing when you when you win something. Let me tell you this. Um, I am a man of balance and I've it's been my recipe my whole life. I've been a professional. Uh, I started my professional career at the age of 19, six months after high school. So this is the only job I've ever had. And this is what I've been working towards. And since the beginning of my career, that has been my recipe to success. And I know some guys, they fight, they get right back in, into it full speed. It's not how it works, especially, you know, you don't celebrate the small victories, the big ones never come. Every fight I win, I take my two weeks. I can't stay out of training for too long. I get so, and maybe a week, you know, if I'm not injured, I, I'm right back in it. But yes, I do sit back. And, you know, especially if you do something as big as becoming world champion, I've always told my body, I'm very in sync with my body and mind that, listen, we are working and we are going to keep on just grinding and grinding until we get that belt. And um, that is the next step. And now there's another, there's another uh, goal, uh, you know, that's even, even higher. But I, yeah, I, I won't lie. Of course, when, uh, when I won the belt, I took, a, I took a couple of weeks and, you know, if you're not going to cel celebrate that win, if you're not going to celebrate that, you know, you've just created history, then, you won't be rewarded, you know, showing that gratitude to um, yourself and um, to everything that, that came together. You know, your body needed some rest, you know, uh, your brain, your emotion, emotionally, mentally, physically, you know, after all these years for the, working towards it. Of course I did. But then, you know, there's a time for, for work and there's a time for play. And, you know, I took my time like I always do. And then got back right into into the grind, and then it's uh, now it's now it's up to the next goal, and uh, defending this belt is the next goal. So yeah, absolutely, I did have a lot of extra, a couple of meals, a lot of a couple of beers, and you know, enjoying my life as a as a normal human being. But you know, that only lasts for so long. That's a that's a you know that's rewarding yourself, and then you get back into it. I stumbled across this video where you were talking about fear and you said, I only fear God, I fear being average and, and basically losing. And I want to know about your relationship with fear. How was that something you were able uh, to conquer, to make peace with? Is that, some, is that a feeling that you chase? 
kind of t break that down for me if you can. It's a very interesting point and it's a very important point because let me tell you this, uh, I believe there's so many fighters that are physically, or you see them in a gym. I think there's, I've heard it from so many guys. I know a few guys. You see this guy in the gym and you think, how are you not where I am? How is this possible? And it comes down to one thing. When they, they try to shy away from that fear, they go, no, I'm not going to think about it. It's there. The fear is a part of what we do. Any fighter that says he feels no fear is an absolute liar. And it's how you deal with it. The fear is, and like I said, uh, I fear God. I fear being average because I was created by a powerful God and he gave me all the attributes to be so much more than average, to be extraordinary. And that's, you know, extraordinary for everybody is different. And, you know, to follow your path and do it in such a manner that your ceiling, you reach that ceiling because that's, that's the important part is reaching the base, the heights that you set out for yourself and that you know is possible and doing whatever it takes to get there. And then of course, being average, at, like I said, it, it's a slap in the face of the people that believe in you. It's a slap in the face of, of my creating what, what I was gifted with in terms of mentality, in terms of, of physicality and, and being healthy. Um, you know, it's a, it's a privilege to have all that. And uh, so that's why being average is not an option because being average can only be my fault. And um, for some people being average is for that makes them happy. But for me, I know if I go that route, I will always question myself and I will always wonder what if. And, um, you know, losing is part of this game, 100%. And, you know, anything can happen in a fight. You know, it's such a, the margins are so small. But that fear of losing against another man gets me up every single day. The fear of being humiliated, the fear of, it's not about getting hurt or health-wise. It's about all the work that I put in, all the people that believe in me. Now, you know, like I said, the humiliation, because at the end of the day, you're a gladiator, you're alpha, and you get into that, into that octagon, and you work so hard, and so many people put in so much, and so many people expect, or not expect, support you so much. For, for them, my family, my team, if I should lose a fight, that loss will be just as bad or even worse for them than it is for me. And, you know, I fight for that. My whole country, the, you know, we saw how proud there was, the thousands of people waiting for me at the airport. That is something you fight for. And that is something that, you know, when I fight, the whole country is, 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 is in there with me. And if I lose, the whole country loses. And that is something that I, can, I can't live with. And uh, that's, what, that's what pushes you when you feel like, oh, I don't really feel like doing that extra session. I don't feel like, you know, I'm tired. I don't want to, I want to keep going. That's what fuels you. And uh, at the end of the day, that is a good fear. And then, of course, that fear before you walk out there, you have to acknowledge it. It's there. But you have to tell yourself, I'm the greatest fighter in the world. And um, this, is what, this is what it takes. And you definitely proved that that's what it takes. You won the belt. And we spoke a little bit uh, the last time. I was like, man, do you think some tears are going to fall? Do you think you're going to get really emotional after you won? And so I got to know, Drikas, did those tears fall? How, how did it feel? How, what was it like? When did it hit you? Like, man, I'm the champ. You know, tell me, walk me through those emotions. And absolutely, when, uh, when that, you know, I've, I've played it, that situation out of my mind so many times, you know, visualizing it, seeing it, believing it 100%. But it's when it happened, she said, I'm talking about, I'm getting goosebumps. As it happened, it was, there's no way you can prepare yourself mentally for that feeling. You know, it felt like the past 11 years as a professional fighter came together on one night. You know, the margin of me winning was so close. It was a split decision. And, you know, that makes you wonder that extra 10 minutes you spent, that 10 minutes earlier you are there, the 10 minutes after training where, you drill the thing that you learned today to make sure you have it 10 minutes, 30 minutes. All those extra works that I've put in over the last 11 years made the difference between me becoming a champion and not. It was so close that all those extra hours over 11 years gave me one point more. And um, that is something to aspire to. That is for myself and for, should be to everyone that, if you put in that work, it seems like how can this small margin of work 
make such a big difference. But the accumulation of all that those hours, all those extra, um, you know, the extra five minutes, extra 10 minutes, extra half an hour, extra hour, that's what accumulated to me becoming world champion. And uh, of course, you know, my dad always, uh, I became a Wacko K1 uh, amateur world champion. And uh, that was a very proud moment. I was the first junior South African to do that. Then I became EFC champion, then double champion. And then, you know, my father always, um, me and my dad are very close and they were so supportive. And without you know, my mom and dad, I wouldn't be here. My dad always said, you know, that's one thing he says, you've been working your whole life. You know, that UFC title would mean, you know, just because how excited he is for me. You know, it's not for him. To see me reach that goal for him would be the highlight of his life. And to have my parents there for the first time in my UFC career, being able to fly them over and have them in the octagon after the fight and being able to, you know, hug my dad and kiss my dad and mom, my mom, my dad, my brothers, and give him that that title of almost as a sign of appreciation for everything he's ever done for me, him and my mom, you know, because they drove me to all competitions. They, they without them, I wouldn't be involved in martial arts they got me into it and they supported it 100 percent. so that was you know that bout it didn't signify a world champion for them it uh signified uh me reaching my dreams and they've invested and supported my dreams for so many years and that was just a token of appreciation and that was probably even more special than becoming a world champion. Tell me a little bit about that inspiration that you've gained from your family. I didn't even know we were going to go in this direction in the interview, but when you spoke about this, it just, it, it immediately, like, I can relate to that so much. So I want to know from your perspective, the inspiration you draw from them. To understand that um, we are very close knit family, me, my two brothers, my mom and my dad. And, um, you know, the, the love in that family is, in my family is, is incredible. Um, my brothers think, my brothers, they honestly think uh, I'm more, they believe in me winning more than I believe myself. And listen, I believe that there's not a man alive that can beat me. And they, they just think it's going to be easy. Every fight, they go, oh, they discuss nothing. You know, they, and, you know, to have them there, they just believe in me 100%. Um, my mom and dad get more nervous, but they just want, you know, to see how proud they are. You know, seeing how proud your parents are of you. And um, they always have been in everything we do, but to seeing, just seeing them, you know, being so happy for me achieving my goal, that is, that is a, a, a type of, of love and, and unconditional love that I don't, I have no idea. I don't think I can ever comprehend it yet because I'm not a father and uh, I'm not a parent. So, but, you know, seeing that and seeing my parents in the crowd before I, uh, I got into the octagon and, realizing for them this is not they don't fear the loss necessarily they don't fear the failure they fear for their child's life because for them i'm not a world champion i'm just their kid they don't treat me like a world champion they treat me like their son so for them they don't want me to get hurt i don't even consider that so for them seeing me being safe and, and achieving my uh, lifelong goal for them it's uh to have them and seeing them and knowing in a fight like that how nerve-wracking it must be for them and being able to succeed in in what i did you know, it's an incredible feeling and it, it always pushes you that extra that extra you get that little extra push when you know when it when you get stuff in there got a few more for you and i'll leave the champ alone uh i wanted to know this as well so the great teddy atlas said once you become a champion you immediately get 30 percent better i want to know from your from your uh, experience do you feel like that's true? Is that something that you can already tell? Do you feel like it's more? Do you feel like you're maybe 50% better or is it a little bit less? Kind of tell me a, a little bit about that and, uh, it, you know, if you agree with that statement. Absolutely. Let me let me explain to you this way. You know, getting better, it's almost, you know, I've always believed in myself, in our system, my training, my, my coach, when I first, uh, my team at TIT. We, and that's what the, the other thing around this for me personally is people go out, look at my style and they go like, this guy looks like a gorilla on roller skates. He's sloppy. He's, but that is this way I train. That is the way we do it. And that is not just, how, that is how we, we have our style and then we, we believe is superior. And 
we believe in that system because I believe my coaches 100% in, in what we do. And winning that title just proved that we are not just hanging with the best. We are now the best on planet Earth in my weight division. And the style that we've invested in and believed in, my coaches and my team, it was all worth it. And we were right. And now you can believe in your system even more. And that self-belief you get that from that, because no matter what anybody says, becoming a world champion, just being in the top five is an ex it's, it's special. It's, there's not a lot of people who will ever say that in their life. I'm talking about fighters. So yes, it, it, it gave me that, that almost that stamp of approval of what we've been doing. And my whole team feels the exact same way now. So all my sparring partners, all my training partners now also believe so that they saw this happen in front of them. A guy they, they spend time in the gym with every single day did this, so why can't they do it? So they've stepped it up a notch, which means I have to step it up a notch because my training is getting that much harder and my, the, the quality of training is getting that much better. So 100%, I don't think even 30%. I think when um, my fight comes in August, I think I don't think 30% is going to be what it, um, what people see. I think they're going to look at it and say, wow, this is a 100% better fighter. And more recently, these two fighters, you know, Strickland and Adesanya, have tried to make it a little bit, you know, personal. Uh, they made a lot of, they kind of tried to bait you into maybe making yourself look not the best in, in the public sphere. Because you're a man of balance, right? You don't want to go too high, too low. Tell me how, how difficult it's been for you to keep that balance when people are, are, are trying their hardest to make you get you to make you get out of character. Let me say, and I think the key word you had then, it was perfectly said, is character. I think a lot of guys do have a character and um, I don't have to. You know, at the end of the day, I am who I am and the, the people I really care about know who I am and they will always, um, they would, they will always be, be there and they would always appreciate me for being me and I am the way I am and like I always say I will match you in whatever it is you want to do you won't see me going out there and just start ranting on somebody maybe um you know trying to poke the bear and see what happens you treat me with respect I will do that exactly the same to you it makes no difference in how I approach my fight it's never personal in there you can be the biggest asshole or the nicest guy on earth I'm going to go out there and try to kill you. That's, and you're going to do the same to me. That's what I go out there and do. It doesn't matter what our relationship is like. In terms of, let's say, on a media day or in terms of per personal interaction, you treat me with respect and I will do exactly the same. But if you want to go, if you want to go, we saw that restricted. I was treating him with only respect. And as soon as he started, uh, you know, going in another direction, I'm ready for that. The end of the day, I'm a warrior, so um, you're not just going to walk over me. It's uh, never going to happen. I won't be bullied ever. And um, so, I mean, that's how how that played out. And yeah, I said what I said, and I was like, I said, uh, uh, there's not one part of me that that's sorry about that. I said it because you try to humiliate me, and I will show you what it feels like to be humiliated. So the same with this. I mean, yeah, on a personal level, uh, Israel Adesanya, I don't like it. Yeah, sure, he tries to bait and, and all that stuff. That's that's up to him. You know, I'm a smart guy. Smarter than him, for sure. Um, I, like you said, it's about keeping a level head. Um, you know, if you look at, at war, if you look at, at fighting, as soon as you lose yourself in in with emotional, that's where, where the mistakes are made. Um, you have to keep level-headed. I approach everything I do like I approach my fight. I approach it with a mind of, you know, I don't get, like I said, there's nobody, anybody's ever said or will say that's going to make me genuinely angry. There's not a sentence. There's no words. There's nothing, you know, no personal attack on me that will ever get me to react the way you want me to. I will react only the way I want to. Because at the end of the day, when I fight, I can't be reacting to what you're doing. I have to react the way I need to react. And, um, that's the thing. And yeah, trying to make me look bad in the public eye. You now, at the end of the day, that's the public's opinion and it doesn't really matter. You know, for me, um, you know, I'm there to be, be a world champion and, and, and 
build my legacy. It's not, um, you know, if, uh, obviously Strickland has his fans and Izzy has his fans and, you know, good for them. That's great. Um, they have the very, their personalities on, on you know, on a mic or on a camera of, you know, the, the Strickland you see on stage and, and the, Izzy, I don't think, I'm, I'm actually quite a fan of Strickland. I have uh, respect, a lot of respect for him and I think he's not a bad guy at all. Um, but and as a fighter, of course, for Izzy, uh, the world's respect is done amazing things in the sport. Um, on a personal level, um, we disagree on on quite a few things, and I do not see uh, think even outside of fighting. If we weren't fighting, we would be be friends. But you know, that's that's a whole different story. It's uh, at the end of the day, we are fighters, and we're going to get into the octagon. And like I said, whether we are friends or not, it doesn't make any difference. But keeping a level head is 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 the biggest part of this game. It's the biggest part of this game, and you know people can say whatever they want. People they can try and make me look however they want. I genuinely do not care. You had one of the best lines of the night back um, when you and Izzy first faced it off, where uh, you told you said, "I may be from Africa, but I'm no brother of yours." And that line has taken off. I mean, the comments on YouTube, everyone loves uh, that line, and, and I feel like. Something that simple, especially coming from a man like yourself, spoke volumes. And so whenever we talk about this this upcoming fight, you know, like I said, you and I were talking about it a little bit. I think stylistically, um, it, it's it's such a fun fight to break down. Uh, I was, we were talking a little bit about the leg kicks, the body kicks. Uh, that's something somewhere where Adesanya can get hit with. Um, from your perspective as well, I'm excited to see how you deal with the counter-striking. He's not someone that likes to kind of put the forward pressure on. Um, and I'm excited. You like to march forward. I think there's just so many dynamics of this fight um, that really, really excite me. From your perspective, now that we're, you know, we're, we're in the midst of the training camp, we're getting closer and closer to the date, um, what, what, does this, what is this next performance going to mean to you? What is it, what, whenever you, you visualize this upcoming performance, what's it going to be? What's it going to be like? What's it going to mean to you? I mean... Th this win for me is, you know, I've always looked at Israel Adesanya as the benchmark. Now, Izzy became champion a long time ago. And uh, I've looked at him and always knew this is where I need to be if I want to be the best in the world. This is the benchmark. And he said it, like, uh, like I said, he's, he's one of the greatest to ever do it. And this fight for me is... Um, is going to put me in that position. This is where I take over as one of the greatest to ever do it. This is where my years of building and climbing that ladder is coming to a point where I am now the guy. Um, that's one of the greatest to ever do it. And, um, you know, like I said, with Izzy, he's done such incredible things in the sport. And if you look at his fight styles, he's He's very tricky to, to figure out. He's, a, he's so good and he's a very smart fighter. He figures out his opponents and he, he sets a lot of traps. He does it incredibly well. So for me, this fight is, is a, it's, I mean, it's just like beating Robert Whitaker was. It's a fight that people don't think you're going to win. And yeah, of course, you know, it's a fight. It's a, it's a, it's a hard fight. I'm fighting against arguably one of the best middleweights ever. And um, I have to go out there and prove that I am that guy. So that's what this fight's going to mean to me. This fight's going to mean that I told you I belong here. Um, you know, this fight means exactly that. That Trigger's Diplicy is now in the conversation of being one of the greatest middleweights ever. The first time I, I, I spoke to you, you said that you know you want to eventually go for the double belt. You want to win uh, another another one. If you beat Israel Adesanya, or when you beat Israel Adesanya, um, in your perspective, do you think that's going to be next, or is that something maybe you want to you know have another defense under your belt? Is that something you? I know you're obviously thinking about Izzy right now, but do you see that in the near future? I said, let me tell you, I said it. I think I'm a you know everybody wants to become a champion immediately, go for double champ status. Connor, when he did it. He deserved to do it. You know, he, he, his timing was perfect. He was on the rise and he proved in his double title fight, that was basically the greatest performance of his career, that he deserved to be there. I am not rushing it. 
Um, I am a fan of defending your title uh, at least three times. Um, and then it's going, okay. If there's no contenders that really go, wow. You know, that's why with this uh, comes out pulling out of the Whitaker fight, I was really looking forward to that fight because that was going to answer a lot of questions. And I think the comes out fight would be a massive fight. Um, you know, of course, but, you know, so that was a very exciting fight to look forward to in the future. And, um, you know, of course, uh, Whitaker has been looking great in his past two performances. But I'm looking to defend my belt uh, now and then um, on to the next defense. You know, if, if you know, there's going to be something that makes sense. And uh, I'm definitely in no rush to, to go up to light heavyweight. I just see it as, a, as a, a goal in the future for me. But it's definitely not something I'm rushing towards. I am focused solely on defending this motorweight title as many times as it takes till it only makes sense to go up the weight division. Whenever we wake up on, on Sunday after, or here in America, on Sunday after the fight, uh, what's the headline going to read? After your performance, after you know you, you beat Adesanya, what's, what's the headline, what's the title going to be? What do you think people are going to take away from this fight? I think... It's an interesting question. What do I think the people are going to take away from this fight? I think uh, I'm going to have a lot less call-outs. Let me tell you that. I think a lot less people are going to be calling me out. I think a lot less top five, top 10 guys are going to go, nah, I want to fight Jukas. I think that's what's going to happen. I think there's going to be a lot of people saying, no, maybe I need a couple of more before I, I go at the champ. You know, I think that's what's going to happen. I see myself planting doubt in every single, every single contender in the middleweight division, just like I did coming up. And um, now it's going to be even... I think people are, are gonna gonna look at that fight, especially um, they are the middleweights, and say and know that they have to step up their game. They're gonna, you know, gonna realize this sport has changed forever. And if you don't change with it very quickly, if you don't adapt very quickly, you will never be there. And um, I think it's gonna it's gonna change the game forever. Drikus, you're the man, brother. I appreciate your time. You took plenty of time with me. Uh, and, I, and man, I, like I said, I greatly appreciate it, bro. Here early, early morning hours in America. I can't thank you enough. Brother, I want to give you the floor, man. If there's anything you want to let the fans know, let the listeners know, uh, feel free, man. The floor is yours. Uh, man, I appreciate it. Great talking to you. All the fans, uh, thank you so much for all the support. All the haters, thank you so much for the support. And then, of course, uh, South Africa. Guys, we did it. We've made history. Now let's go build that legacy. I appreciate every single person behind me on this. Every single person that's been supporting and, and rooting for me. It means so much more. I don't give a damn about proving people wrong. I'm, uh, I'm all about proving those that believe in me right. So thank you for that. And I fight for each and every one of you when I get in there. Absolutely, Drickus. Hey, man, we'll be tuning in in August for this big time fight. We cannot wait, man. And with that said, brother, thank you again for your time and all that good stuff, my friend. Appreciate it, man. Good to talk to you again. Have a good one.